Hi, this is Dr. Michael Shearer with this YouTube video on getting started with locator fixed in your dental laboratory. This video is really aimed at you as a laboratory technician or running a dental laboratory and you've got some interest in what Zest is up to with the locator fix prosthetics. It's pretty darn cool. And also, it's a little bit of a paradigm shift in fixed full arch, but not necessarily making you change anything or anything really major for what you do in your laboratory. And I know many questions come up all the time of how I go ahead and do these, what are some prosthetic options that we have for our clinical cases and communicating with your, your dentists as well as with your laboratory partners as well on how to utilize locator abutments to do a fixed full arch. Let's go ahead and jump right in. First and foremost, let's go ahead and discuss some of the prosthetic options that we have for a locator fix because this tends to be a very common question that we see in the industry. First and foremost, the most common uh, fixed full arch that we may see in clinical practice is going to typically fall into one of two. Really the fundamental, really the straightforward as well as the basic and arguably the least expensive way to do fixed full arch, whether it's with screw tain with locator fixed, is going to be a cobalt chrome frame or titanium frame with processed denture teeth on the top. Super straightforward. Basically, like if you're going to do a wax and cast of a metal frame over the top of the locator housings and then actually process denture teeth and PMMA using a packing method or an injection or even a microwave system, it's more or less heat processed acrylic resin with denture teeth on top of some sort of bar. And then what we do is, is, is we attach the locator fixed housings to the bar of the framework utilizing a composite resin such as the Zest chairside attachment processing material or a resin cement. And then arguably the other really common option that we may see for fixed full arch is monolithic zirconia. So we can start uh, with either of these in an analog or digital workflow, which we'll comment in just a few moments. But basically we're going to get to some sort of tooth assessment, whether it's denture teeth on a model or a digital scan of denture teeth or a digital scan of a reference prosthesis. And then we can choose. We can make a bar and then do an analog you know, processing to the top, which is the image here on your left. Or we can go ahead and make a straight up monolithic zirconia process, prosthesis. Really all zirconia, you can do that. Or you can even build in uh, a titanium or a cobalt chrome bar into your monolithic zirconia prosthesis using like I-bar or ExoCAD or 3Shape. So yes, you can also do monolithic zirconia with a reinforcement frame or bar. Additionally, we have a few other options of nano ceramics of which you can go ahead and use a combination of ceramics as well as polymers. So one example is going to be Crystal Ultra, which is from the Digital Dental Company, and a layered composite over the top. And a lot of times you can combine that with something like a Trilor bar or some sort of reinforcement metal frame that will give you the strengthener to go ahead and hold everything together. This polymer bar and milled uh, polymer teeth uh, is really typically done in almost always a digital process. However, there are ways that you can also do this with a quasi-digital and analog procedure. Additionally, for pure digital prosthetics, we can also do 3D printing of our materials using any one of the 3D printing materials out there. A couple of examples that you see here is the Densply Lucitone resin or the Sprint Ray on X resin as well. And this can be done monolithic or you can combine this with like a high impact denture resin and denture teeth, uh, or you can typically, most clinicians leave it as monolithic and then put on some uh, pink composite over the top as well. So that way they can gain the strength that way. Neat part about a 3D printed prosthesis is, is, is that it's really low cost and very fast compared to the traditional milled options that you see above. And then finally, the last economical option here too, and with a, a pure milled process or procedure is going to be straight up PMMA. You can build in a base in there as well, or, like, or a framework like a metal bar, uh, either with 3D printing, milling, or casting. Um, or in this particular example, it's just straight milled PMMA with layered pink composite over the front. And that comes out of a milling machine where the, it's kind of the analog to what you would see here with uh, 3D printed full resin. So that'd be a pure digital process. The milled monolithic PMMA would be a kind of a combination analog and digital process. But the neat part about this is, is you do get a lot of the milled strength that go along with a pure milled PMMA option, plus the versatility of utilizing a milling machine and the accuracy as well. And then when we start to add that, we can go ahead and make it a pure monolithic, like a tooth colored and then a layered pink composite over the top. 
So in all reality, the summary here is this is whatever material that your clinician would like to use, uh, you can use with locator fixed as well. So let's talk about some of our fundamental clinical workflows and laboratory workflows for utilizing locator fixed in your laboratory. A clinician that has an existing patient with an existing overdenture in place is really a streamlined protocol when utilizing locator fixed. The clinician go ahead and take the patient's existing overdenture that they've been wearing in their mouth and assuming the patient has four implants in place, maybe they only have two, no big deal. If I have two in the front, I put two in the back and I can convert that patient over uh, to an immediate uh, uh, load restoration that same day as well. Regardless, they'll have at least four implants as, as kind of shown in this example. Then the clinician would go ahead and take that existing overdenture, remove the locator silver removable housings, uh, typically with a trefine drill or a burr, uh, and then go ahead and do a chair side pickup of the locator fixed gold housings, and then trim the prosthesis back. And I know this because I have a laboratory technician that does this work with me. Uh, he and I work side by side and he does the denture conversion. So I'll do the pickup, hand it off to my technician. My technician does the conversion uh, and then he hands back to me the finished locator fixed interim prosthesis, which is all resin. Um, however, if I do have a metal bar, metal frame in my existing overdenture restoration, I can certainly utilize that in my interim prosthesis. However, it becomes an FP3 style prosthesis, meaning it's sitting on top of the tissue and implants with artificial pink and artificial white on top of the patient's natural gingiva. And then ultimately, this is the interim prosthesis that we want to make a definitive or final prosthesis at a later date. So then we can go ahead and either do an analog process or a digital process or a combination of the two to fabricate a new locator fixed uh, prosthesis as well. Uh, the clinician can go ahead and make traditional locator impressions, make a, a, a stone model uh, with uh, gingiva on the stone model, and then have a denture teeth set up in wax. Or the, the clinician can go ahead and send you a 360 digital scan uh, or some sort of digital scan, everything packaged together in one scan, and we do a pure digital protocol as well. So let's take a moment and review a few of those. So Option number one of our locator fixed prosthesis, we can see here that we're gonna go ahead and see the patient as a new patient appointment, examination and primary impressions, then send to us or the laboratory and fabricate a custom tray. Sometimes we can skip these two procedures and use a stock tray, totally fine. So at that point, we'll send that custom tray back to the clinician or the clinician can in one visit use a stock tray. Then the clinician will take PVS impression material or polyether, whatever the, the clinician would like to use inside of that tray and then over the locator abutments with the little locator impression copings, you know, the ones that look like little top hats or wine glasses that snap onto the locator abutments. The clinician will make a pickup impression, send to the laboratory, and then you will go ahead and pour up a stone cast or stone model with the silver locator analogs in place. A lot of times I will use a GI soft or some sort of gingival mask around the locator analogs just to give it a little bit more of a realistic feel. Then I'll request the laboratory or the laboratory technician will go ahead and fabricate uh, base, base plates and wax rims, just like a standard locator removable case. Send it back to me, the clinician, and I'll go ahead and do the wax rims appointment. So I'll go ahead and trim down the wax rims, made a, make a bite record, and then go ahead and send back the information to the laboratory, such as tooth selection, shade, what type of teeth I'm gonna use for this particular case. It'll come back to my laboratory or it'll come back to you uh, with the wax rims and the stone casts and the information on the laboratory RX. Then you'll go ahead and change from the wax rims, set the denture teeth, just like an analog procedure, return it back to the clinician. The clinician will go ahead and try that teeth, set a teeth in the mouth, verifying aesthetics, phonetics, centric relation, uh, stability of the prosthesis, et cetera. A lot of times during the locator removable protocols, I'll typically go ahead and have a stabilized base plate while I'm doing the try-in, meaning it's got a locator housing in the base plate with the processing inserts in place, and that'll go ahead and allow me to make a more accurate bite record as well as give the patient an idea of what this will feel like when it's in a properly stabilized orientation. That's completely optional. It's not required, although a lot of laboratories do enjoy sending that to the clinician and the clinicians do appreciate that. So once I verified the trying with the patient goes back to my dental technician and dental technician uh, invests that, uh, boils out the wax, uh, and then goes ahead and injects uh, or compression molds the acrylic uh, over a frame or any sort of bar that I design. 
So since we're going to be fabricating a locator fixed prosthesis, we can either do it in a, in a, um, uh, a digital or analog way, which I'll describe in just a moment. Once that uh, prosthesis is fabricated, then it goes back to the clinician. The clinician can either do a chair side pickup of it, or we can send back a laboratory processed uh, locator fixed prosthesis. You'll notice here this, this looks pretty familiar. This is pretty identical that what you'll see with a locator removable prosthesis as what you would do with locator fixed. The only difference would be here at the end in the laboratory process. In that particular case, you'll have a titanium bar with a PMMA denture teeth, or you'll jump it over to another restorative material. Option number two, as I mentioned before, we can do a conversion prosthesis. This is an example of a conversion prosthesis of a, of a, a clinical case and example from Dr. Dan Fenton. He went ahead and he had a patient with an existing maxillary mandibular overdenture. He removed the locator housings and then picked up the locator fixed housings chair side and then went ahead and it trimmed back the prosthesis to just a simple thin prosthesis and this was his temporary. Then uh, once the, he delivered these as a temporary, goes back to the patient, and then Dr. Fent went ahead and fabricated the final restoration utilizing conventional methods. The third option is a digital workflow. The digital workflow is gonna utilize a clinical exam. Typically, it's gonna be a reference denture, which is taking the patient's existing denture, usually an immediate denture, then a wash impression on the inside of the patient's denture, seated on the edentulous ridge, have the patient close an occlusion, border mold, and then pop it out of the mouth. Utilizing my intraoral scanner, scan that denture 360 degrees, then scan the opposing and scan the bite in the mouth, send it back to my laboratory technician. My technician will then go ahead and build the denture uh, from that 360 scan. Sometimes I'll send along a scan of the edentulous ridge with locator scan bodies in place. That is optional. So all you really need is the reference denture, the 360 scan of the locator abutments uh, to go ahead and fabricate the locator fixed prosthesis. However, it is never a bad idea to go ahead and have a secondary scan, either digital or have a stone model for the locator abutments. Then my laboratory will design the prosthesis, 3D print or mill or fabricate the zirconia prosthesis will return to me. And if I do not send along a second impression, uh, typically a stone model of the locator abutments, I will need to do a chair side pickup when utilizing this pure digital workflow. The reason for that is, is the reference denture scan is not accurate enough to go ahead and exact position where the locator abutments are in that scan. So it's a good idea to have a scan body scan or a traditional impression uh, with your locator impression copings. So three main options, classic removable over denture, number two, conversion prosthesis, number three, a digital reference denture approach. So comparing and contrasting analog versus digital. Analog is very simple and streamlined for clinicians and technicians. It's a really straightforward laboratory protocol. Why? Because we're used to doing this every day for traditional locator removable cases. And this allows us to go ahead and utilize laboratory processing of our housings. So one neat benefit of utilizing the analog approach is if a doctor wants you to return to them a finished fixed prosthesis uh, that's ready to be snapped into place, uh, you are currently gonna still need to do that with the analog impression technique with the little snap impression copings that you would use for your everyday locator removable case. So it's a good idea to go ahead and have two things from doing an analog approach. You want at least a denture set up in wax on that same model as your locator analogs. If you have those two things, meaning the approved wax in as well as the approved stone cast, um, then you're ready to fabricate your locator fixed prosthesis. Now this does rely upon a stone model and it also has a questionable, you know, negative. You know, you may or may not know if you have truly passive fit. It really depends upon the quality of the impression from your dentist. Now you could verify this cast by popping on impression copings on the model, utilizing like a GC pattern resin or a composite looting impression copings together. But the nice part about locator fixed is you do not have to use a verification index with locator fixed because it utilizes locator abutments and locator snaps. There's a little bit of flexibility there compared to screw retain where you have to be deadly accurate. And that's what a wonderful aspect of locator fix for the laboratory technician is a streamlined laboratory approach. And if you would like to go ahead and utilize an analog protocol, you can do that and in a very streamlined manner. If you're interested also in going towards digital, this is an expedited clinical workflow. It's really streamlined, but you also have to have a clinician that's ready for digital. And I do like the digital approach because it's really reliable for zirconia and lots of other polymer-based step-by-step uh, -step procedures. 
I love digital, although I certainly recognize that it does take a little bit more technique sensitivity to go ahead and do either a reference denture 360 scan or an edentulous scan in the mouth. I encourage you to check out some of our other courses here at the Zest Academy on YouTube, as well as some recent videos that I've watched on things like the locator balance technique to streamline your digital impression technique with locator digital. So some negatives of the digital approach, it does at this point require a chair side pickup of the overdenture, meaning there's no way to build a digital completely workflow currently uh, where you would like a clinician if they would like to say, hey doc, you know, uh, what do you want for your final prosthesis? Do me a favor, just send me back the thing where I could just snap it in. Currently, we do require a stone model to do that just for uh, the reliability of the analog workflow. However, if your clinician doesn't mind doing a chair side pickup of either your zirconia, your PMMA, or any type of polymer or 3D printed prosthesis, digital is the way to go. No question, there is some variability in workflows and a little bit of confusion for clinicians. It's just a little bit trickier. If you have a clinician that's used to scanning everyday dentures and reference dentures, no problem. We also recognize that with a lot of our clinicians, as well as what you'll see with your clinicians that you work with when interested in doing locator fixed in your laboratory, the vast majority are gonna go ahead and send you an analog scan or analog stone cast as opposed to scans. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the direct versus the indirect intraoral pickup technique. So the direct, meaning chair side, intraoral pickup technique of your locator fixed housings, one of the best parts about it is it ensures passive fit. Some argue that it's impossible to get a truly passively fitting fixed full arch restoration with screws. May or may not be true, but what I do know is this is clinically one of the most reliable ways that I can ensure that I have a true passive fit of my fixed full arch restoration is to do a chair side pickup of the uh, locator housings. Once we go ahead and we do our chair side pickup of the locator fixed housings, it's really consistent. It's very predictable. We build the space into our uh, final prosthesis and I use a little bit of resin, takes a couple of extra minutes, but then I can really make sure that I feel good about my fit as well as my accuracy of the fit of the prosthesis to the, to the uh, implants. And in my opinion, it is the ultimate way to go ahead and get a truly passively fitting restoration. As mentioned, it does take more chair time. So on average, it may take a few extra minutes. Some clinicians that are super fast, an extra five to seven minutes. Other clinicians, it may take an extra 20 to 30 minutes to go ahead and do this, depending upon the number of implants and clinical experience. And it is a bit more technique sensitive for the clinician. Um, however, I do highly recommend this. This is a big part of what I teach clinicians, uh, both domestically here in the US and around the world. I personally think that the direct intraoral pickup technique is vastly superior. However, when it comes down to locator removable versus locator fixed, almost 100% of the time I recommend a chair side pickup of our locator removable cases. However, with locator fixed, I really do love laboratory uh, techniques, indirect laboratory process techniques. Why? Because it's streamlined, it's efficient, it's very clean and it's very predictable in terms of looting or bonding of the housings to the prosthesis. And you could certainly make an argument that with a fixed prosthesis, I don't wanna have any moisture or any risk of moisture contamination in between where the resin and my housings meet in the mouth. If that gets, if that gets loose, then all of a sudden it becomes a removable prosthesis. You don't want that. So with a laboratory procedure, since I can dry it off really well, there's no moisture, no saliva, I can really feel a lot of confidence that I know that it's gonna go ahead and be processed with a high degree uh, of not only uh, accuracy, precision, but then also control of moisture as well. However, our accuracy and precision really is limited based upon the accuracy of our stone model. So and as of right now, uh, the locator fixed procedures do require a stone model to go ahead and do a indirect laboratory procedure. Uh, so if your clinician sends you an impression that's kind of like, well, I'm not so sure about this impression, that's how it's gonna fit in the mouth. Maybe a good idea to communicate with your clinician, hey, maybe you wanna do a chair side pickup of this. Are you sure you want me to use a stone model? I'm not so sure about the stone model. Well, okay, I'll do a chair side pickup versus, you know what, just do your best. I really, it's all, always say it's, it's all about technique sensitivity, both for the clinician and the technician, both to make a good impression as well as uh, follow through with the, the quality laboratory procedures to ensure that your locator fixed prosthesis is made at the possible highest level that you can conceive as well. 
And what I do recognize is both of these are validly important, whether it the clinician will always picks it up chairside versus prefers to do it another way. They both work, and it's our, our position as laboratory technicians to go ahead and guide the clinician about what works best from your experience as well. So let's talk a little bit about some key takeaways. Most importantly, prosthetic options with your locator fixed prosthetics. Any prosthetic type that the clinician prefers, whatever they use for their existing screw retained fixed full arch, you can use with a locator fixed, including zirconia with and without a bar, PMMA with and without a bar, denture teeth with and without a bar, cobalt chrome, titanium, polymer frames, 3D printing with and without a bar, nano ceramic materials with and without a bar. It's completely up to you and, and the clinician as well. If you can use it for all and X, it'll work for locator fixed as well. Certainly it comes with different price points. If you certainly want to keep zirconia as your premium uh, option and PMMA as your baseline option, completely up to you in your laboratory. In my personal opinion, it's all about kind of having a various different things on the menu. So then that way I can offer that to the clinician as various different options. So it's never a bad idea to go ahead and start with analog. The simplest approach, if you're just getting started in your laboratory and you've got a clinician you haven't done a lot of work and maybe you're not so sure about their digital approach or maybe your software is acting up or I'm not so sure about how to do the reference denture, no big deal. Just tell your clinician to go ahead and just do it the same way that they would do plain old overdentures, stone models, pick up impression, bite rims in the mouth, keep it simple. Simple techniques like this are the standard for locator removable and arguably the best way to get started with a locator fixed is to follow those similar clinical and laboratory workflows. And don't go wrong with analog fundamentals. So the most straightforward and reliable approach, as I mentioned, is just to start out with having a stone cast with locator analogs in place using those impression copings, pop it on in the mouth, do a impression, you receive back the impression, pop in locator analogs, make a stone cast, and then go through and get to the point where you do wax rims, denture teeth on the model. You just want an approved denture tooth setup on a stone cast that's the same stone cast as your locator analogs, very much like what you would do for traditional all on X, what you would do for locator fixed. The big difference, you don't have to go ahead and use those screw channels. You don't have to worry about setting denture teeth, moving them around. Oops, I drilled the, through the hole of the denture tooth and the clinician moved the tooth around. Now I need to go buy a new tooth. With a locator fix, since there's no screw channels, it makes it just like an overdenture up until the end appointment or the end uh, before uh, doing your laboratory processing, you're gonna fabricate a bar uh, or utilize some sort of reinforcement mesh. So some digital fundamentals in your laboratory. Digital is incredible, and it's a wonderful approach that can be utilized for your laboratory. Really, the best way to get started is to start with a reference denture, a 360 scan of the patient's interim prosthesis, which is typically an immediate denture. So I'd go ahead and I'd take that patient's immediate denture, strip out the soft reline, then go ahead and wash it with a medium or a light body PBS impression material, over the locator abutments, not the housings or the analogs uh, or the scan bodies, just the straight up locator abutments. Then I go ahead and I pop it in the mouth, have the patient bite down, border mold, stick out their tongue, tap, 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 pop it out, 360 scan that outside the mouth. Then I scan the opposing, pop that relined immediate denture back in the mouth, scan the bite, scan the bite, and you get a scan that looks like what you see here on the top right of the screen. Now, you can also go ahead and combine that 360 scan with analog. So if you're a little bit nervous about that final step, you know, looting the housings to those analogs or, you know, to, you know, with the digital analog uh, approach, you can go ahead and do both. So you can use the reference denture to go ahead and do your tooth setup, your bite, your vertical position, and then you can have the clinician just make a quick PBS impression of their locator uh, impression copings. Now you've got uh, a stone cast of analogs in position where you can go ahead and match that in the software. You can scan that on your desktop scanner or, or a lab scanner and then match it in three shape, ExoCAD or any other software utilizing fiduciary markers that are existing in your reference denture scan. It's a bit tricky to explain here in just a short YouTube video. Make sure you check out some of our additional videos on our digital protocols here at Zest. And on that note, there are more educational opportunities available for you, the laboratory technician, as well. We certainly love bringing laboratory technicians to our in-person education courses where we do have a built-out laboratory training facility in Las Vegas. 
laboratory benches, lab scanners, desktop, all this incredible software as well, where you can come on out to Las Vegas and learn laboratory protocols for locator and locator fixed prosthetics as well. Check out our website, www.zestdent.com and type in education and click on Zest Master's Program and Las Vegas Education Facility. Additionally, we have other online courses. If it's a little tricky for you to get to an in-person course in Las Vegas or somewhere else domestically, you can go ahead and access 24-7 on-demand education on our Zest Academy website, which is at www.zestdent.com. Click on education, and click on Zest Academy to find out more. I thank you for your kind attention. My name is Dr. Michael Shearer as well. Here's my contact information, my website listed below. Reach out with any questions as well. Um, make sure you check out some of our other educational offerings. We have an entire video of laboratory procedures and protocols in our Zest Academy course, as well as some of our in-person education training course series.